Let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Danny Drubin. Everybody up, everybody up, good morning. Stay standing, stay standing. Everybody take the pointer finger on your right hand, point it up toward the ceiling. Your right hand. Okay, good. <laughs> look at the ceiling as if it were a blackboard. Look up, everybody look up. Now against that ceiling, make a clockwise circle. Get your clockwise circle going. Everybody got your clockwise circle going. Come on, raise your hands, this is healthy for you. All right, now watch what I'm doing. Keep your circle going. Bring it down a little lower. Down a little lower. Down a little lower. Down a little lower. Look at your circle. Which way is it going? Oh, no. oh you're screwed now. <laughs> what happened? Have a seat. Everything in practice, business, and in life is about one thing and one thing only viewpoint. It's how we see things. And to build a million dollar practice, to market a million dollar practice, the only viewpoint that actually counts the most is the patient. It's all about this. So I'm going to share some viewpoints with you today. I may not be right, but mostly I'm always right. <laughs> this year, 2015, is my 50th year in chiropractic. I actually began chiropractic school September of 1964. How many people here not born in 1964? Holy moly, it's almost everybody. Are there any brand new students in here? Raise your hands if you're new. Okay, take a look at your future. <laughs> 50 years from now, you could be a short old Jewish guy. <laughs> Chiropractic has been good to me. I have literally traveled the world. Uh, probably could not have achieved anything without Parker. Went to my first Parker seminar in 1971. I was here yesterday watching some doctors being honored for their GTO. I totally encourage you to do that. The more you are around this environment, the more successful people you meet, the more you open up your hearts and your minds to what's possible, which is what we're gonna speak about today, the more successful you're going to be. It's got to do with reinventing yourself, how you do, what you do, the way you think, the way you act, the way you market, the way you manage. It's interesting, I was very fortunate as a chiropractic student. Uh, I learned the philosophy of chiropractic from Reggie Gold, the one and only famous, incredible, dear friend, Reggie Gold. He taught me that a chiropractic uh, profession is about a philosophy and art and a science. How many people have heard that? Thank God. And here's what I've learned over the years. I've learned that it's not the best philosophical individual that necessarily builds the biggest or most successful practice, nor is it the best technician, nor is it the person that's most uh, gifted in science and physiology and anatomy. Yes, we are indeed a philosophy and art and a science. If I was reinventing the definition of our healing art, which no one has asked me to do, I might add, I would include a skill, a, cu a communication skill. Because invariably, as I've been around this profession so long, the people that achieve the greatest amount of success are the best communicators. The quality of your communication is the quality of your marketing. So today we're gonna to speak about how you can reinvent some of the things that you do, and we've got a little bit of time to do it. And so all of your personal success and all of your professional success, and you'll notice I put it in order of personal and then professional, and here's why. Practices follow people. The practice that you have right now or the practice that you will have is a direct reflection of who you are. If you don't like what you see, well, then you have the opportunity to make some changes today. But practices follow people. The practice you have is exactly what it's supposed to be based on, how you think, your belief system, your communication skills, all of the things that we know to be so about our wonderful healing art. And so 
It's personal success first. I tell people work harder on themselves than they do on their business. And we'll talk about the difference between a business and a practice in a moment. Because only growing and dynamic human beings have the opportunity to build growing and dynamic practices. So all, all success begins with a question. And here's the question. Here's what you should be asking yourself. Here's the, the rhetorical. What's possible? What's possible for me? What's possible for my practice? Where do I go from here? As best I can tell, practitioners practice 38 to 43 years. Let me tell you something about practicing 38 to 43 years. Practicing 38 to 43 years is a wonderful thing as long as you're practicing because you want to, not because you have to. Eventually, the people that I work with the most arrive at a point in time where they aspire to one thing. And I use one word to describe the things that a lot of long-term practitioners teach me. It comes down to freedom. Financial freedom, freedom of success, freedom to spend more time on your hobbies, your passions, your families, freedom to practice when you want. And it all has to do with the decisions that you make right now. We teach people 3D thinking, decisions determine destiny. The practice that you have right now has been based on the decisions that you have made or have been made for you up until this moment in time. And in order for you to enjoy a better future, make better decisions. And that begins today, the way you communicate, the way you educate, the way you market, your systems, your protocols and procedures. So do you own a business or a practice? Uh, how many doctors in here are the only practitioners in your office? Raise your hands if you're the only doc in your office. You are in practice. How many people here have multiple doctors in their office? You are in business. What's the difference? The difference is if you are in practice, you're really only as good, no matter how great you are, you're as good as your ability to get out of bed each day and go there. Don't show up for a month, see what you've got left. Practices run on people, businesses run on systems. So what you want is rock solid internal and external brand building to create a reputation and referral driven business that runs as well with you as it does without you. This requires thinking on a totally different level. Practices run on people, businesses run on systems. What you wanna create and what Parker will teach you are systems, protocols, and procedures that will assure your growth as long as you buy into the collective consciousness, to the vision of what we're doing here. That's where it's about. So here's the concept of BAB. The concept of BAB, BAB is an acronym. Goodness gracious, everything in Parker. When I started in Parker, everything was an acronym. LSMFT. I thought it, in my day it stood for Lucky Strike Makes Fine Tobacco. It was a cigarette thing. PTA, PSI, no, 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 PSI. I, I, I inflate my tires when I see PSI. I think my air pressure's down. Everything in, everything in healthcare has become a, a, an, an acronym. Um, uh, RLS, what is that? Restless leg. This is how television teaches you through marketing, restless leg. We had that when I was a kid, going to school in South Bronx, New York. Some kids twitched, some kids didn't. We didn't have a name for it, it's just some kids a little twitchier than others. Now it's learning 8 million ADD, da, 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 da. Some kids were stupid and some kids weren't. <laughs> and the world has changed completely. We're so afraid of everything. You can't play in a playground, you can't do anything, you can't, everything, kids can't walk to a play, you can't, I mean, it's terrifying out there. It's, when, I, when I was a kid, they put you in the back of the car. There were no seat belts. No seat belts, we didn't wear helmets, we didn't wear seat belts, there were no airbags, there was nothing. Stopped short, you hit the seat in front of you, made a turn, you flew over there, this is the way it was. <laughs> Holy cow, the world has gotten soft, chiropractic has gotten soft. We've gotten soft, about work ethic, about work ethic, about belief system about putting in the time and effort and energy to, that it achieves to, uh, 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 that it requires to achieve greatness. Selfies? Are we really that shallow? As, is this what it's up to? I had selfies when I was a kid. It was called a frickin' mirror. You stood in front of it, you looked at yourself, and that was it. 
I didn't need to take it with me and carry and show it to everybody else, because you really think people give a rat's rump about your picture? Focus. Focus. 38 to 43 years of focus. BAB stands for base acceptable bottom. The base acceptable bottom is the least anything should be in your practice. So here's what's possible. Is it possible to have 20 new patients in a month? Do you have to have had 20 new patients in a month to, to know that that can be done? No. Is it possible with, if we spend the right amount of time educating and motivating and inspiring our patients to health and wellness, if they understand the true benefit and value of what we do as chiropractors, is it possible to cause a patient to stay 40 visits over the course of their chiropractic lifetime in a practice? Of course it is. Is it possible in any state, regardless whether you're cash, personal injury, mixed model, or anywhere in between, to collect $50 per patient per visit? Is that possible? Those three numbers, 20, 40, 50, is a half a million dollar practice. That's our base acceptable bottom. I'll tell you what. If every single chiropractic practice in this country was collecting a half a million dollars and rendering that much service to that many people that generated a half a million dollar, we would be a better profession. The schools would be filled because people want to do what we do, inspired by what they see. That's what's possible for you if you're willing to think on a different level. By the way, that's three quarters of a million dollar practice. You want to know where new patients come from? It's a mixture. It's a mixture. It's a mixture of your internal marketing, your external marketing, because there's got to be balance between in and out. I tell doctors, you've got to work as hard outside the practice as you do inside the practice. They say to me, you mean I have to work harder? Yes. Yes. Harder and smarter. You've got to reverse engineer the process. You've got to ask yourself if you wanted a million dollar practice, two new patients a day. Chiropractors practice typically about 20 practice days in a month. June is a wonderful month. It's got four full weeks plus a Monday and a Tuesday. Take a look at your calendars. Take a look at your practice. Run it like a business. Learn how to read a spreadsheet. Understand your numbers. Understand what your CPP is, your cost per patient. How many people know what their cost per patient is? About six. Your cost per patient is your overhead divided by your office visit. If, it does, if you don't know what it costs you to treat a patient, how do you know how, how, do you know how to uh, uh, adjust your fees accordingly? How do you know what plans to belong to and which ones to walk away from? How do you make intelligent and prudent business decisions? Because it is indeed a business. Of course, it's where a humanitarian healing art. Of course, we change the course of people's lives. But at the end of the day, after 38 to 43 years in practice, most practitioners are going to be totally dependent on a soon-to-fail social security system that will not support the young people in this room. The decisions that you make right now about your future can assure and ensure your future if you make the right decisions. That's a million-dollar practice. This is con if you're going to go there 38 to 43 years, you might as well get wealthy. Here's my financial philosophy in five words. Money good, no money bad. <laughs> Somebody says, wow, that's really shallow. <laughs> like I care. <laughs> now, somebody said to me, money can't buy happiness. This is not true. <laughs> this is one of the great lies of all time. In a worst case scenario, Money can buy a Ferrari so you can drive around looking for happiness. <laughs> money good, no money bad. Debt bad. Debt is bad. Your goal is to serve enough people, generate enough money, come out of debt, have your money work harder for you than you're working for your money so someday you've got better choices. That's what it's about. So there are three questions. How large are you willing to think how large are you willing to think? Here's the cool thing. It does not require any more mental energy to think a gigantic thought than a small one. Same process. How large are you willing to think? That's part of it. How bold are you prepared to act? Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone to do more things, to see more people, to meet more people? Here's what we know for sure. How many people want more new patients? Good, meet 500 people. 
in 30 days. That's 16.6 people a day. Hand out 500 business cards to 500 different people in 30 days. It generates 15 to 20 new patients every single month. Well, I don't really want to do it. I don't care. Some of you would rather go down with the ship than confront the reality of fear that holds you back. How driven are you to create greatness? Driven, passion driven, purpose driven, up each day. You know what success is? It's really about one thing, direction. Do you move each day in the direction of what you aspire to? Do you really want it? Are you prepared to go out and market, do lectures, do screenings on the outside, lunch programs on the inside, recall and referral programs on, on the inside? Everyone's on Facebook, everyone. The whole planet is on Facebook. Do you have a sophisticated Facebook marketing program that your people receive every day? It's gotta be daily. Anything less than daily doesn't work. And the content has to be less than 10% chiropractic. It's gotta be 90% other stuff because if it's too much chiropractic, they know what's coming and they stop looking. 10% chiropractic, 90% broad mixture of everything else will tr with tremendous visuals. Why? 90% of everything your prospective patient will ever learn, they learn by virtue of what they see. We are hit with over 300 marketing messages a day. How many people here watch a commercial on TV that you've seen so many times that you can't even stand it and you put on another channel and the same commercial's there? Corporate America, take a model out of corporate America. Do you really believe nobody knows Budweiser, McDonald's, Dodge trucks, or any of this stuff? They don't stop. Marketing has to be ongoing, ongoing. It never, ever, ever, ever ends. It's three questions. Those are the three questions. By the way, there are three, there are three reasons why chiropractors fail. It's taken me a lifetime of management, marketing, and everything else to try to figure out why some chiropractors just can't make it. Reason number one. Some of us are stupid. <laughs> you will just fly in the face of conventional, brilliant wisdom and in spite of the marvelous education you're going to get. You just don't listen. You're stupid. Reason number two, some of you are scared. Fear has crushed more dreams than anything else in reality. And three, some of you are lazy. How many people here do not practice on Saturday morning? You lose 11 to 14% of your business by being closed on Saturday. 11 to 14% of income in chiropractic is generated on Saturday mornings. I say to chiropractors, well, why don't you practice on Saturday morning? And then they tell me this, I wanna be home with the kids. Let me tell you something about your children. <laughs> Mostly they hate you. And the last thing they actually want on their Saturday morning is you. <laughs> you want to do a favor for your children, go to work and send them through a great college education. It's not about managing time. You can't manage time. It's, a, it's an expendable commodity. There's only 1,440 minutes in a day, 86,400 seconds in a day. You can't manage it, and life on this planet is short. In a few days, I'm going to be 69 years old. In the last six months, I've had four major surgical procedures and 25 sessions of radiation. And if you think this goes on forever, you're wrong. And if you think patients have a problem with copay, you're wrong. Because five times a week, my radiation for five weeks, and the copay was $184 and change per visit. People will find the money if you make the care important enough without scaring the bejesus out of them. There is no shortage of money. There is only a shortage of people that are willing to effectively communicate the chiropractic message in such a way that people are positively predisposed to wanting what we have. Three responsibilities of the CEO. As the chief executive officer of your chiropractic organization, here are your responsibilities. Create a new vision. You must continually create a new vision for your company. It can't look like anything the same. It has been said, and I believe this with all my heart, and I teach it as I travel around the world, businesses and people must be reinvented every five to seven years or risk being obsolete. I love what I see at Parker. Why? 
they've turned, they've turned the ship around. They're reinventing what we've done in the past to make it a contemporary vehicle by which we can, this organization, change this profession. Change more lives. Make your life better. You have to create a new vision for your business. You've got to sell that vision to your team, not a staff, a team. They've got to look like a team, act like a team, think like a team, behave like a team, market and communicate and educate like a team. And if you want to go home, ask uh, your team members to write their job description. And if the word marketing is not on it, then you've done something wrong. And you've got to groom a successor. You've got to build for a future. It's either got to be an expansion future or an exit strategy. I said to a very successful chiropractor not too long ago, do you have an exit strategy? He said, yes. I said, would you care to share it with me? He goes, well, I guess someday I'm going to die. And, <laughs> and uh, I exit, and that's my strategy. I hope you've got something a little bit more sophisticated than that. Because many of, for many of you, the most valuable commodity you will ever own in your life, even more than your home, could be your chiropractic practice. So here's the lesson about Hill A and Hill B. That's us. That's you chiropractors. We, we are at Hill A. Let's think of ourselves at Hill A today. And now we see, uh, we see Hill A, we're at the bottom, we want to climb. We want to ascend. We want to go up. So we work hard, you work hard, you work hard, you get to the top of Hill A. And now for the first time you can see something bigger and grander. And what can you see? You can see Hill B. How many people want to get to Hill B? Cool, what do you have to do first? You gotta go downhill A. Every time you reach a peak in any area of practice in life, gives you the ability to reinvent what you do, how you think, and how you behave. Your practice is gonna be determined by your behavior. When I speak behavior to people, they think in terms of physical things. Thinking is a behavior. You want to talk about marketing, your chiropractic practice will be built in your mind long before it is ever built in your office. If you've studied universal laws of attraction, Jim's old infinite oneness, and all the things about the power of the mind, the power of expectancy, universal laws, you will understand it starts here. You want to get to hill B, you got to, you got to go down the hill. You reinvent, you change the way, educate, communicate, market, and, and move. Pace becomes incredibly important to building your organization because the universe have horrors of vacuum. When you create space for more people, then you can attract more people. The idea that when I get busier, I'll speed up has killed more practices than you can ever imagine. You move at the pace of what you want. You market at the pace of what you want. You think at the pace of what you want. You understand the power of nine. See, your responsibility as doctors is give direction, hold accountable, cause people to do what you want them to do in their own best interest. You do the right things with your patients, comes down to four words, always impress, never disappoint. You do the right thing with your patients. Every patient you do have a successful experience in your office has the ability to refer nine other people over the course of their experience with you. Disappoint a patient just once. They will tell nine other people. You are basically as good as your last act. Here's a statistic. 68% of the people on earth that ever stop doing business with a business, including us, 68% of the patients that you have ever lost, doctors, you've lost for one reason and one reason only, perceived indifference. People vote with their feet. Every single time they leave your office, they have a decision to make. Am I coming back or not? For the people that don't come back, of the 68%, here's what's sad. They don't give us a report of findings. They just quit. Only 4% of people that have ever left you will care enough to tell you why they've left. Otherwise, they make up stuff. You're as good as your last act. We teach people all business is show business. You know who does best in practice? Best communicators, the best marketers, and the people that put on the best show consistently. So I'm sitting in a bar, which is not unusual, in in uh, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, one of my favorite restaurants on earth. It's called uh, um, Geronimo's. I'm sitting at a bar waiting for a table and I'm sitting next to this business guy, real successful business guy. We get to speak about his success, what I do, and it's hard for me to describe what I do. I write books, I do this, I do that, I do stuff. 
He does, he owns cattle farms, dairy farms. This guy, cowboy, real cowboy. He and his wife, me and my wife, Laura, were sitting there, we're talking, and he, he hears what I do, and, I, and he says, I'm gonna teach you two words you already know that have accounted for my success and all of my greatness. I said, really? What are those two words? He goes, well, let me tell you, these two words have actually changed my life in more ways than you can imagine. What are, what are they? He goes, these are words that you already know, but you've never used together. Now I'm begging, could you please tell me what these two words are? Consistent persistence. The people that do the best in our healing art consistently pursue excellence in all that they do each and every day. They go down the hill, they go up the hill. Now I want to reinvent my practice and get to the next level. Multiple offices with partners, multiple streams of passive revenue, doctors doing the work, reinventing yourself into the um, managing partner of a chain of offices. How large are you willing to think? You're limitless in your ability to conceive greatness. You were designed for greatness. So your practice is always one of two things. You're different or you're dying. If you can't tell me what makes you different, you're the same. If you're the same, you're a commodity. If you're a commodity, people will price shop. I, sell, I say to doctors, tell me what's so special about your practice. I get two things. Our patients really love us. If that was the truth, why are the inactive files bigger than the active files? And I'm really good at what I do. And if that's the case, after 38 to 43 years, where practitioners, regardless of years in practice, still see about 115 visits a week. And if the conventional wisdom was, well, the longer I'm doing this, the better I should be at it, and the more people should be clamoring and beating a path to my door, is not true. The bigger you think, the harder you work, the more different you are. If you're not different, you're the same. If you're the same, you're a commodity. Have higher fees than everyone else. Why? Your fees make a statement about who you are and the quality of your care. Does anyone really want to go to the lowest bidder when it comes to their spine? Somebody told me the other day they were in a marketplace where people charge $20 an adjustment. And they wanted me to say, well, what would you say to a patient that came to my office and said the person down the street charges $20 for an adjustment? I said to them, only that person knows what their care is worth. Think about this. High fees build retention. Whoa, how does that make any sense? The more they pay, the longer they stay. Why? They've got an investment to protect. Chiropractic care is not a cost, it is an investment. And so it is the quality of the internal marketing based on the quality of your communication is, is, is incredibly important. So always impress, never disappoint. It's got to be better than anything that they have ever conceived in their minds. We are visual human beings. 90% of everything we've ever learned in our lives, we learn by virtue of what we see. People actually have an image in their mind about what the, what the experience is going to be in, the, in advance of the experience. Anybody here ever walk into the lobby of the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas? Whoa, be blown away. What's your office look like? We are scanning human beings. People make a decision about your practice, your building, your team, you within 15 seconds. This is reality. Within 15 seconds after you walk into a hotel, a restaurant, a car dealership, uh, a, a chiropractor's office, within 15 seconds we scan and you've already made a decision as to whether we are in the right place or not. That's marketing. Always impress, never disappoint better than anything they conceived in their IR, their internal representation. We think in pictures. So do your patients. It's gotta be a spa-like environment. Go to the nicest spa in your town and make your office look like that. Take down some of the signs. Take down, I mean, the lighting, the ambiance, the flooring the granite, the marble, the water features, the live plants, 
I go to chiropractic offices, there's like one CA in every office that thinks that she or he can save every plant on earth. I got Charlie's brown Christmas tree sitting in the corner, one twig coming out of it with one leaf hanging off it. I said, would you please put this frickin' plant out of its misery? Just kill the plant already, kill the plant. It's gotta be gorgeous. You've got a world, you need to create a world-class team. And doctors, your organization will be as good as the lowest level person on your team. Not the best. It's why corporate America terminates the lowest 10% of performers in their businesses each and every year. Patient-centric care, including office hours. Your office hours are supposed to be about what's in the best interest of the patient. Why chiropractors got to the point where they will practice on Thursdays, they'll have Friday morning hours, but nothing on Saturday, makes no sense. It's stupid. If you do it, stop it. Why would a patient need to come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for care because they need it, but they can go from Thursday to Monday without an adjustment? How does this make any sense? How is that about the patient? We've defaulted, we have defaulted to what's in our best interest and not the patient's. And that's not the way to create a reputation and re re referral-driven organization. NPGB, new patient gift bag. New patient gift bag, what does a new patient receive at the end of every visit besides a receipt? What if they came away with something incredibly dramatic? Logoed and branded bag, beautiful, your, your brand, your logo. If you need a new brand and, and a new logo, there are companies that will do this for you. You could have logo and branded mats. If you went to stopdirt.com, you could logo and brand everything with every mat in your office. Increase your fees. If there's anyone here that has less than a $50 adjustment, raise your fees. Question. If every single fee for every single service that you provided for every single patient went up by $2, how many patients would quit? How many? None. So why don't you just raise your fees? You're worth it. BAB, base acceptable bottom, two internal marketing events, two external marketing events every single month. Marketing drives practices. I don't know that you need to be on every marketing uh, I don't know that you need to be on LinkedIn, Twitter every day. This, people open their mail by the garbage can, just like you. They take the mail, they go to wherever the trash can is, they start throwing stuff out. Facebook. Our experience teaches us that Facebook is where most people go for most information most of the time in the entire world. That's where they go. One, how many people here would like 100% improvement in your practice and in your life? Raise your hands if you want everything 100% better. Go back to your offices, find 100 things, make each thing 1% better. Rarely is it one gigantic thing that separates greatness from mediocrity. It tends to be cumulative, a whole bunch of little stuff over time. Stand by your brand, 27. You need 27 marketing impacts before somebody even learns your colors, your brand, your logo, and your slogan. 27. This is why companies market, 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 and pay uh, $4 million for 30 seconds at a Super Bowl. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, our, pre our preference is, is Facebook. For what we are and who we do, and the people that we serve and the communities that we serve, Facebook works best. Have a marketing calendar. The intent with two in, two out each and every month. Then, doctors, CAs, it's your responsibility to give direction, hold accountable. Tell patients what you expect them to do and make sure they do it for their own good. Missed visits need to be made up. If you make it okay for a patient to miss visits, they'll believe that's the habit. Shake up your communication. Work harder on the quality of your communication. Words matter. Words matter. More questions than statements is marketing. Can I count on you to follow through on this program of care? Can I count on you to follow through on this program of care? Is an implied contract. Would you be okay if you didn't have to suffer with this pain anymore? Is a leverage piece. 
You will be out of pain long before your spine is corrected. It's important things for patients to understand. You feel better before you really are better. And the idea that what we do is a program of care, not a series of standalone adjustments, is incredibly important. In order for you to have a million, how many people here would like a million dollar practice? Would that be okay with you? Okay. Um, for every doctor in here that is already in practice, you are 18 months away from a million dollar practice. If you do the right things, say the right things, care the right way, market the right way. Market is ongoing. Marketing is going to drive your business. Uh, you guys have been wonderful. Did you have a good morning so far? Thank you so much. Got wonderful Jason Dietz coming up. Thank you, Mark.